seven years. Do you believe it's been seven years since Russell Westbrook and James Harden were on the same team? 2012 Finals with the upstart Thunder, the chance to knock off the Heat, the young guns, the 23 and under, Russ, KD, Harden, Ibaka, that superstar team that in an instant was dismantled when James Harden was sent off the Houston. It's been seven years that that team was together. And now Westbrook and Harden are back together. And today we're going to talk about why that pairing might be a bigger success than uh, most people are thinking. What's up, y'all? Kevin from Basie here, uh, talking sports with you guys today. Um, so let's dive right in. Last week, Chris Paul, in a blockbuster trade, was traded for Russell Westbrook. Uh, and in addition, Houston sent Oklahoma City two first-round picks and two first-round pick swaps. So a huge haul for the, for the Thunder. They're able to move off Westbrook, who at this point in time doesn't really fit their timeline anymore since they've traded away George, they've traded away Grant, definitely looking for towards rebuilding, accumulating draft picks, and they did just that. They accomplished their goal. Um, I mean, oftentimes in, uh, in a trade, the loser is the one that gives up the, the better player, but in the case of the Thunder, Westbrook just didn't fit their timeline anymore. Um, he did the exact opposite of what they need to do at this point. They're going all in on the draft and building young players, and uh, by keeping Westbrook there, there's potential that he's going to get you to 500 and get you an eh draft pick, whereas shipping him out, replacing him with Paul, assures them of a top 10, top 5 draft pick, almost assuredly. But uh, I've heard a lot of people talking recently about how this Harden and Westbrook thing is not going to work. It's not going to be a success, that, that the Rockets are just, they're, they're shot. They don't have any ideas left, and so they're just throwing all the chips on the table and hoping it hits. And yeah, the Rockets gave up a lot in uh, draft capital to move off Chris Paul and move to Russell Westbrook. But if you think about the bigger picture, it was something they had to do. Chris Paul and James Harden no longer seemed to be on amicable terms. Paul and Harden didn't want to speak. They didn't want to play together. They had basically reached an ultimatum from Chris Paul to get him off the team or it was going to be ugly. And for third straight team, Chris Paul is asked out. Um, and now he's stuck in Oklahoma City. And it, when you have a player as great as Harden, you really want them to be happy. And if by keeping Paul there, you're going to leave him discontented. And you don't want that happening with your superstar. Now he gets to reunite with his longtime buddy in Russell Westbrook. They grew up playing AAU ball together. They played uh, in the same conference in college, both in the Pac-12, Harden with Arizona State, Russ with UCLA. They um, both from the Los Angeles area played together on the Thunder, and now they're back together in Houston. Many people are saying that it's going to be a bad fit, that Russell Westbrook's not a good off-ball player, he can't hit a three, and it's, just an, it's going to be an abject disaster. Uh, Chris Paul was, is a good shooter, could at least hit a three while he lost his ability to penetrate and create for others. Last year, he still was a great spot-up shooter for the team, and Russell Westbrook seems to go against everything that the Rockets stand for. He's not a great three-point shooter. He's not very efficient. He jacks up shots in volume. He takes a lot of mid-range jumpers. And so, so on its surface, it seems like, you know, you go from Paul, who, yes, he's declined uh, offensively and being able to penetrate, but he seems like a good fit next to Harden, even though Paul does have some ball-dominant tendencies. Paul could hit a jump shot. He was okay deferring to Harden for the most part. Um, but for a very similar reason as to why the Chris Paul and James Harden thing worked for about a year and a half, I think the Russell Westbrook and Harden duo will work as well. And, and the biggest thing is, well, one, what do you define success? And in my mind for the Rockets, I don't think this is necessarily going to be a title team. But success for them, I feel like they will be in contention for the number one seed in the West and could very well achieve that. And I think that's a huge success for them. Um, if you look at it, what D'Antoni did oftentimes with Harden and Paul was he would stagger their minutes. So Harden and Paul would start the first six minutes together, and then one would come out. And, and basically until the fourth quarter, he had their minutes staggered. So Harden and Paul were never on the floor together, Harden, other than the start of the first, start of the third, and end of the fourth. 
And if D'Antoni can do a similar thing with Harden and Westbrook, then it, that's a game changer. Then you have two dynamic players, dynamic playmakers on the floor at a given time, and there's not really a drop-off from one quarter to the next. And if you think about it, D'Antoni's system is really perfect for Westbrook. The team that they've assembled around Westbrook, have they, has he ever had any shooters like that? I mean, yes, Paul George is a great shooter, uh, and Jeremy Grant was improving from three, but there's always a liability on that Thunder roster. Terrence Ferguson was shaky and on and off again, on and off again, shooter. Steven Adams doesn't really have a jumper. Jeremy Grant, while he found a jumper, didn't take a whole lot of volume threes. The floor was always really compact for Russ, even with Paul George. And that makes it tough for a guy like him who uh, depends on getting to the lane uh, for his, his buckets to, to really wreak havoc when the, you can just clog the paint on him. But now you go to Houston, and he gets to play with James Harden, who's a really good three-point shooter. Eric Gordon, who's a great three-point shooter. P.J. Tucker's a good corner three-point shooter. Austin Rivers, they, and they got some other pieces off the bench that are good shooters. Russell Westbrook's going to play on the best shooting team of his life. And when Harden's on the floor and he gets to be the ball-dominant player that we saw in Oklahoma City, it's going to be basically five out. Russell Westbrook just driving to the hole and kicking the wide-open shooters. You're not going to be able to clog the paint like you were able to in Oklahoma City. It's going to have huge dividends for Westbrook moving forward. And same thing with Harden. I mean, Harden, the, many of the reasons we see Harden successful is teams can't hardly double-team him because when you double-team Harden, you're leaving a three-point shooter wide open. And, and the same thing for Westbrook. If he gets doubled, then all of a sudden there's a wide open shooter at sometimes. Now, that being said, I think there can be some there's gonna be some clunkiness with Harden and Westbrook on the floor together. Both very ball dominant players, um, always about their best with the ball in hands, and frankly, they're kind of disinterested off the ball. Neither player is very committed about cuts at this point in their career, or spotting up, running on screens, anything like that. Harden oftentimes just stands in the corner, which is a a really bad habit of his, and then same with Westbrook for that matter. So when they're on the floor together, it'll, it'll be a little dicey. Um, the two players are going to have to adapt, but when you have two players as smart as Westbrook and Harden, you got to think that they'll, they'll, they'll make it work to some extent. Now, as I said, playing that way for the entire regular season, I think, can lead them to the number one seed or very close to the number one seed, staggering those minutes, playing a deeper rotation, so you're, you're always get, ha- letting Westbrook play with his guys, Harden play with his guys, um, on the floor and letting them each kind of be the their own owners on the on the floor. Like when Westbrook's on the floor without Harden, he can really own the team. Same with Harden without Westbrook. But when you get to the playoffs, that's where I think this team's going to struggle, and, and and that's where the flaws will kind of shine through. And, and unless Harden and Westbrook can kind of really figure this one out before we get to the playoffs, and I, I think the biggest issue is when you get to the playoffs, your bench really shortens. You go from playing 10, 11-man rotation during the regular season to playing 7 and 8, especially with the Rockets. They, historically, the last couple of years, haven't played that, gone that deep into their bench. I mean, I think they were playing six players against the Warriors a couple of years ago, 7, 8 tops. And so when that happens, you force Westbrook and Harden to play and coexist a lot of the time on the floor together. And as we talked about, neither is a great off-ball threat. And... More importantly, neither is really willing to be that great off-ball threat to make cuts and uh, move around screens and stuff like that. I mean, it, it's going to be an adaptation. Now, if those two players start learning to, you know, compete and get open cut when they don't have the ball, then it could be more successful. But, but right now, expecting two guys in 10th and 11th seasons or, or something like that to all of a sudden become great dynamic off-ball threats, I, I think is... A little unrealistic and so when you get into the playoffs having Westbrook on the floor next to Harden is just going to clog things up for Harden because Westbrook doesn't have a great three-point shot he's not a great jump shooter and it really showed last year is his percentages dwindled across the board one of his worst shooting seasons of his career I think since like his rookie season um, he's struggling from the free throw line seems to have lost confidence in his jumper altogether so when, when you get to the playoffs is where you're really going to see that shine and, and see kind of the, the luster fade from this dynamic duo. So I, and I think that that's where it comes to your definition of success. Is success for Westbrook and Harden winning a title? 
I mean, I, I think at that point, then that's, you're being a little unrealistic. But if you define success for them as being a high seed, make it to the first, or make it to the second round of the playoffs, maybe the conference finals, and I think this team has a very good chance of being successful. Uh, as far as winning the title, I think I don't think that's going to happen. But um, they'll definitely be fun to watch. Two dynamic friends back together. Two MVPs. Uh, I don't think that can be overstated as how talented these two are and uh, it'll be fun to watch and we'll see what happens with the with the reunion down in Houston. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to like and subscribe, um, that would be great. Thank you so much.